Entrepreneur.com and get yours. Um, but hey, do you work full time or part time? And you also have entrepreneurial ventures. Um, do you are you addicted to the direct deposit like me? Um, maybe uh, you really, really, really like multiple streams of income because you got multiple streams of bills and dreams. Well, if that is you, you are an awesome dualpreneur and we honor you and we are excited to share some information. We've been doing these for over a month every day, every weekday for over a month and we're winding down, but we could not do this without having my big brother, Coach Oliver Adams to come on. We, you know, you know, he is like the finale of this se this season. We'll call it this season <laughs> uh, for this. this. Right. So take a little break and then we'll be coming back soon. But before we ended it, I had to have Coach to come on here. He is not only an international speaker and author, but he is a business expert and a credit coach. He helps everyone to be successful in real estate, but also in business in general, uh, in general. But I really wanted him to come on here to have a conversation with us, to tell us about the power to live, because it's hard enough with the processes of a business. But when you leverage the power to live, not only for your life, but also in business, that's where your power um, is really, really magnified. And we wanted him to come on here and talk about his book, as well as give us some motivational tips on how we can use the power to live, to leverage our life and our business. So coach, thank you so much for joining me today. I so appreciate you for being my last live for this season of the virtual dualpreneur or the dualpreneur virtual mastermind. Thank you so much. Well, I'm humbled, you know, like we talked about prior to going on air, and I went back and looked at a lot of the, the different speakers you had. You had a phenomenal month. Great individuals that came through and shared knowledge. And I'm just trying to hope I can keep up with those folks that came before. Hopefully there's something for everyone here today. And I look forward to pretty much trying to deposit something in everybody's spirit and mindset to get them to their next step. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, I, I really, really do appreciate you for that. And of course, you are um, in my top, you know, top 10 uh, of my friends to connect with if I need anything. You're always there. You're always responsive. You even volunteer um, information and services and resources to even help my community. And I so appreciate you for always being that person. We go way back. We go, we're, we're a good decade into this. And it, you know, it's funny because all of the people that I have had on here, I've known them for at least or close to a decade. So it's not someone necessarily that I just met, even though I'm meeting some great people. I've had, I've had long-term relationships with you all. And every one of you, you know, you weren't like, oh, well, how much, how much you're gonna pay me or anything. You were like, oh, let me pour into your community. You know, what can I do to support? And we thank you, especially during this pandemic. And even those that are watching after the pandemic and you've survived, congratulations. Um, there's still information and resources and experts that you can leverage even now um, for, for that. So thank you again uh, for being that guy, for being the coach, because you're all of our coach, you know what I mean? You just are. So let's get right into it for the sake of time. Um, tell us a little bit about you so everyone knows who is talking to us today. And then, you know, talk to us a little bit about this power to live. What is that really all about and how can it really enhance our way of life and business? I tell you about a week ago, and I'll tell you a bit about myself since we got some time. A week ago, I was on a, um, a Zoom meeting. We think we had about 750 folks on the Zoom meeting. And then a guy by the name of Craig says, tell us something we don't know about you. And he says, I said, uh, I used to be a rapper coming out of Philadelphia. He said, get out of here. So he challenged me to put together a rap. So over the weekend on Sunday, Mother's Day, we unveiled the rap. We did the whole video shoot, the whole nine yards. Had over 500 folks looking at it immediately, but it took me back. But uh, people call me coach for a number of reasons. I'm originally hailed from Philadelphia. I'm a Philly boy. Uh, went to the military when I was young, 18. Back then, it was go to war, go to jail if you got in trouble. There wasn't no options there, so I chose the military route. But in doing so, I was kind of at a disadvantage. 
didn't have the opportunity to pick the career of my choosing. So they put me in this career field called infantry. So we got any military dual out there, which I believe that's always been the great start because it helped me feel my life cycle to now. Uh, kudos and congratulations to you. But going that route through the military kind of like slowed me down and got me resettled in because of a lot of disciplines, a lot of physical training, a lot of mission oriented, a lot of coaching and training. So that's where it began for me outside of hustling on those mean streets of Philadelphia. What you did not know, Tara, is that I used to sell shopping bags when I was a young boy. Wait, was, wait, 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 shopping bags, you sold shopping bags? Shopping bags. There's, in the book, there's a paragraph, we talk about the Italian market where Rocky ran the first movie and they were like running with him. That marketplace, I used to sell shopping bags there. And I used to be on a corner and be like, shopping bags. 15 cents, two, four quarter, right? So that's when I really started learning how to really start hustling. Because if you can sell a shopping bag to somebody that already have a bag, and you just want to double down that bag so the meat and the produce don't, don't break, that's like, you know what, that's doing something. So hail from Philadelphia, went in the military, and uh, I'll talk about the power to live throughout this particular uh, broadcast here. But I believe that deep down inside, there's a light in all of us. And in that light, it's powered by something. So we're not here just to be here accidentally. We're not here because we're just breathing through this thing called life. In this life cycle, God's given us power. And I'm not preaching, but God's given us power. And in that power, he wants us actually to live our best lives. Now, I hear that term a lot, but what does it mean to a lot of people? Well, you have to have the energy to live the life. One of the books we just got finished reading was a book about 212 degrees. 211 degrees will pretty much get that water super hot. But when you get to 212 degrees, the water turns into boiling factor and it can power a locomotive. And I believe that when people shift one degree, they can go from being on fire to boiling to having the energy to be able to propel them anywhere they want to go. So that's where this power to live comes from. That's absolutely awesome. And I love that book, um, the, um, 212 Degrees, um, because I, when I didn't know that, when I didn't know that it had to be 211 just to get hot, but that one degree, just one degree that can take it to the boiling point. And sometimes it's that one step, that one thought, that one wish, that one dream, that one step that can take us to the next level, which is the most powerful. So tell us a little bit about the, the power to live. What, what sparked you to want to write the book and then to create the movement? You remember your, your good friend Clyde Anderson? Yeah, Clyde has been mentioned uh, a lot. So Clyde is going to have to pull out my, you know, pull him out and make him come on here. Yeah. He bring your roll of ducks. Well, he actually helped produce this for me. So we sat down and we thought about it. See, if you could tell me one thing I would to bring to everything together the real estate, the credit, the coaching. What would it be? And I said, you know what, Klein? I lean towards the power to live. And the power to live is not about me, Oliver, per se. It's about the individual in front of me. It's about you. We've talked a little bit about how you had to pivot, even in this most current situation. But if you didn't have the power in, you could have been a victim. You could have stayed in a, a relaxed, setback mode and went on with life. But you say, you know what? Let me get up. Let me make a shift. Let me pivot. Let me do what I need to do. And what you've done was ignited in you that power to live. So you refuse to go gently into the night. You refuse to just go with the motion. You're like saying, you know what? Regardless to the new norm, the power's in me to make the best out of this. And this is the message throughout this whole one hour session is that that power to live in you is ready to say, okay, then I'm glad COVID came. Not from a disrespectful of anybody passing, but I've been wanting to spend some extra time doing my reading. I've been wanting to spend some extra time on getting my book published. I've been wanting to go into my websites and make sure these things are refreshed and clean. So that power to live aspect there is just waiting to be unleashed. And sometimes God has to slow people down to get folks to focus and concentrate on the power that's within them. 
I absolutely agree. I call this the world's heart attack, right? So right. for many years, like a, you know, a person says, oh, I got to eat healthy. I got to exercise. I got to do this. I got to do this. And they never take the time to do it. And then they get that one health scare. And that one health scare that puts them on their back makes them realize I have to do this now, which forces them to make the changes that they said that they were going to, but now they're forced to really look at it and make the change. And this is what's happening to the world. I believe it's not just one individual person, but it's happening to the world. The world's not only purging, but it is also making people come to aware that we have to start doing what's right and what's best for us. So this COVID-19 will either kill businesses or it will create a new norm Norm, which will help them to flourish and our goal is that we leverage the power to live to create a new norm to help us to flourish in in that so I, I so appreciate and I do understand that what are some st steps if some people are like okay I get it I hear you the power to live but what does power to live look like what are some steps or some ways that we can leverage the power to live to move forward let's talk simple routines Let's start, you know, for example, I take a nap, you take a nap, but before the nap, when we wake up in the morning, how do you look routine you look? For some folks, they jump up out of bed and haze, put on their clothes and they hit the door because they might be running late. They never took time to settle down, never took time to ground themselves. So in the military, we used to always get up first. So in other words, when we start what we call uh, morning physical training, it's between five o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. Now, some folks are sleeping type folks, and I get that part. But the morning time and the power to live happen to do with you saying, okay, then let me make sure that before I go out there, I know exactly why I'm going. So I always ask myself this question. What well, one thing I can do today to get me to my goals by the end of the week? And I have to have that clear first thing in the morning. Then the second thing I do after I go to the bathroom, <laughs> so we're supposed to do that part, right? Because I make sure I commune with a higher power. And that higher power for me is through scripture. I'm on my seventh and a half year reading the Bible through. And the reason why I do that, because I don't go to church much, but I have a hunger in me to consume a lot of word. So that being the case, I'm kind of like some preacher said, well, you're walking around with a whole bunch of word. You need to be a preacher. I said, well, that's not what I was called to do. That's not my purpose. However, in my lifestyle, those consumption of that communication early in the morning, I can't do it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't do it at 7 o'clock in the evening because I'm not present. That morning routine allows me to get focused, centered, and present. So when I'm present there, I kind of like get some waves in me, some different kind of communication frequencies that I can pick up on and say, ah, there's this one thing I want to get done today. And I make that my 20% rule. I make sure I focus on getting that done, regardless of how the day go, so I'm not lagging. So the morning time would be a fresh start for starting a routine. Start there. And that's good because I've noticed that I have a routine and, you know, like you, most people that are in business and um, have a, a level of success in business, we have a routine, especially a morning routine. And although I'm, I, I, don't claim to be a morning person my body will naturally wake up probably around 6 30 or 7 30 and, uh, and that's when i will naturally um i won't just jump up that's my time to wake up you know i may look at my phone social media i look at a lot of news what's going on what happened overnight um because what happening in um you know, in another country overnight affects the United States during the day. So I, I do that. Um, you know, when I take my morning shower, that is my time with God. And that is my gratitude time, my thankful time. And then, of course, I have to have my coffee. So I, I have that routine. So I do think that that is very important to have some type of routine to help us get to our day. Because if we just jump into it haphazardly, we're not going to feel like we've been productive at all. I do agree with you on the naps though. I have found that the power naps are becoming more and more essential and more and more required as I get older. I'm like a five-year-old when I get hungry and sleepy. Uh, so the power naps are very, very essential. So I have to agree with you on that. You know, I started taking naps when I was 20 years old, same around the same time. When Oprah was on, on, on daytime television, I would fall asleep listening to Oprah. 
it was like the perfect time for me to sleep. Because I know that while she's speaking and her guest speakers and things of that nature, my subconscious would pick up on a lot of the positive aspect it was going through. So I was napping like years ago. And right now, if I try to change that, now if I'm on the grind and there's a task that needs to be done, that nap is gone. I'll push it through because I got the discipline for that. But now as I get older, why not treat myself to a little thing called nap? But it don't take all day. I'm not going to sit there and take a break and watch a video when I can close my eyes and I can go somewhere mentally or subconsciously and come back. So all of that is about the power to live. So if you know my lifestyle, a lot of folks said, Coach, I see you everywhere. You're doing everything. You're overseas. You're over here. Where are you not? I mean, where, 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 where do you slow down? And what they don't know is that when I power up by 3, 4 o'clock, whoever I meet networking and out doing business or socializing, things of that nature, I'm one up on them. I'm totally conscious. So that nap centered me and helps me to be able to get my second win, and then I can see opportunities. So when I come out after 4 o'clock, between 4 and 9 o'clock, be it networking and things of that nature, and I'm, I'm talking to you, I want to actually be there. I want to actually hear you. So that one takeaway may give me an opportunity to strengthen the business relationship. But if I'm uh, fatigued, slowful, it'll show up. It'll show up with my energy. And that kind of transfers to the next person as well. Absolutely. And so speaking of relationships, and I, you know, like you, um, relationships are huge for me. Um, and they're very uh, lucrative as well they can be lucrative how can people um improve relationships or how let's put it this way how important are building how important is building relationships and how can people leverage relationships especially in business well two things happen in business so you know relationships matter so when you went in your rolodex and you pulled out folks that ascended so to speak so from five years ago seven years ago when they was fresh new business partners or affiliates or sponsors, these individuals kind of graduated and now become close associates. And I always say, especially in the real estate space, I used to be a past president of uh, one of the largest boards in the state. Uh, my, my lady is pretty much past state president. And I used to say relationships matter so much that if I pick up the phone and I say, I'm gonna hold this event, will I be charging $20, $30, $40, or can I get a couple of two, five, seven thousand dollars sponsors. And I recognized when I was starting to build these relationships, I was going for volume and volume didn't do it. So when I peeled that back and I went for intention and when I went for uh, a connection whereby, you know what, there's something special about me and this individual. Not long ago, my father died about a year and a half ago. And this guy by the name of Eddie Perez from uh, Equity Prime, I give a shout out, he's a good guy. He texts me and says to me, he said, Coach, you need anything? I said, no, I'm just going to go home, bury the old man, come back, get back on the ground. So what Eddie says is that, how much is your plane ticket? I said, man, I already got it. He said, you're in first class? I said, yep, you already know I'm in first class. So I get a ping on my phone, and when I got the ping, when I recognized that Eddie had already transferred me, plane ticket, rent a car, hotel expenses, through what y'all call cash app. I'm like, what in the world? I said, Eddie. He said, man, come on, bro. I'm here for you. So you don't get those kind of connections when you're just randomly just trying to meet everybody. You got to find that nucleus between you and that individual you're meeting so that thing lasts for when it be able to benefit all parties. Exactly. And it's not just about, you know, who can give you a lot of money. That Those, those relationships can be lucrative in opportunities in meeting other people, in, um, in mentoring, um, in guidance. So relationships are the, nucle like you said, the nucleus of a successful uh, business. If you want to start a business, if you have a business, if you're an entrepreneur, a dualpreneur, you, you, can't, you can't do it alone. Well, you can do it alone, but we can move so much faster with more or as a team. And so that's why it's very, very important that we really focus on building relationships, especially within the dualpreneur community. I'm really big on doing this within the dualpreneur community. But coach, tell me uh, more about the book, uh, 
you know, power to live. What, what is really, what's the book about and how can we leverage this? You know, I want people to get your book one, um, because I think it's going to be very valuable. You know, I'm not just saying that because I need y'all to get my big brother's book. You know, I do, but I, I think it, it will give you so much leverage in what you're doing, but explain to us what the book is about. Um, and why is it so significant right now? Well, I tell you, the book is, is about a journey. It's really my autobiography from how I got started because I got so many questions to, how did you become a paratrooper three combats down the road? How did you become a successful real estate broker in three different states? How did you become a John Maxwell coach? How did you create a credit coaching system that pretty much allows, I could put a million people on the system overnight. So that book answers those in-between questions. I made the book no more than a 45 minute to an hour read. I did not want to make it exhaustive for two reasons. One, I think we all identify somehow through this person called mom. Shout out to the mothers out there from yesterday that was celebrating uh, Mother's Day. In the book, my first paragraph is dedicated to my mom and the things that you know she she embedded in me, the things that she kind of like instilled in me. Because if it wasn't for that tutorialship and that motherly instinct to say, you might not want to go that route, go that route. God only knows where I would have end up at. So the first book talks about that. My relationship with my mother, she meant everything to me. And yesterday was pretty much bittersweet. She passed at the tender age of 48. I was coming from the Gulf War, um, um, war. And when I was on my way home, I got home. And I called my mom that night. And I always go see her. But I called her that night and said, Mom, I'll see you in the morning. I'm going to the high school first and talk to him about Army and talk to him about opportunities. So I didn't see my mom that night. So the next morning after I finished the speaking engagement at the high school, me giving back, this was back in 92. After I finished speaking, I found out to get a call and say, hey, listen, your mom died. I said, are you kidding? So I'm mad, angry at anybody that might even approach me. And the first person I was mad at was God. I mean, I'm really pissed at God. I'm saying, look, I didn't went over there. I didn't did what you told me to do. I didn't did everything you wanted me to do. I felt like Jonah. I felt like getting, on, getting in the belly of the whale and getting out of here. But I learned over time, that's God's way of saying that, my mom waited till I came home. She had some underlying conditions and she hung on as long as she could so that, that we could connect. So I had to learn that over time. So in the book, it talks about the journey in the military. It talks about the aspect of the eighth chapter. There's a conversation that's being had between me, God, and Oprah. And I made sure before I read that, I was like, okay, in all these years with the Oprah, what would Oprah say about this conversation? And I hope you don't mind I share this, this, this one section in there. In this section, I said to myself, okay, then how do I really overcome obstacles? Where, 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 where did a real strength come from to overcome obstacles? Well, I went to the book of Galatians, and Galatians was talking about, and I'm going to pull it up real quick. Galatians was talking about the aspect of the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, meekness, gentleness, kindness. And then it says, from a military point of view, there's no defense against that attribute. I'm like, well, hold on. You mean to tell me no matter what happens in life, no matter what pressures come at me, that in this regards right here, there's no physical or spiritual defense that can compel love, peace. You know, I hear people at 50 years old say, you know, I don't want no drama. They even made songs, you know what I mean? I ain't going back and forth with you folks, right? So. If that's the case, I kind of stumbled on this peace bed that says that if I stay in this area here, even when I'm upset, and trust me, I can get triggered quick because that's the military. But at the end, if I stay in this particular frame, there's no defense to get that. So I had a dream one night, and in this dream, there was this table. And let's look at it like a board. And at the table, you had the CEO, you had the president, you had some board of directors. So when I came to and I began to see who was at the table, there was this character. And they all at the table looked like Superman. 
I'm like, what in the world's going on? But they all had a different letter on their shirts. So I seen this one guy that had an M on his shirt. And I'm like, in the dream, and I was so conscious. I said, let me ask you a question. What do the M stands for? He says, oh, that's mercy. He said, if mercy shows up, you're covered. Because no matter what you did right, no matter what you done wrong, there's nothing you did to deserve it. So mercy shows up. So I said, what about the guy with the T? He said, that's truth. Now, he hurts. Now, the truth is a little more straightforward, a little blunt, things of that nature. So at this table, there was characters for every situation we may have or we may experience. That's the overcoming the obstacles. So it's power to live, overcoming obstacles. So when I found myself in a situation, I was a board president, had over 1,300 members, and a situation crept up. And I had the power through the gavel to handle it that way by saying, this is what we're going to do, that's it. But something said, wait for it, wait for it, back off, take your hands off. So, but with mercy, you can't, you can't control mercy. You even have to trust that mercy knows what it's doing and sit back and wait for the results. But if you pick it back up on yourself, mercy takes off. So in that situation, and it's in the book, mercy showed up, I took my hands off the steering wheel and it turned out perfectly well. So in growing and maturing, you have to recognize that you have to know that certain things or certain battles are all not natural. So you got to be able to understand that you may be fighting a spiritual battle or a natural battle. And if you're not in tune to who you are and what's coming at you, you can be a casualty. I love that. I mean, I love that you have characters for each of those. And, you know, because truth, you know, that, that dude, yeah, he, he can cut. He can cut hard. Hard, man, he can cut really, really hard. Um, but I love that you made them into characters so people can really relate to each of the characters. And one, you know, you got to read the book just to find out what the other characters are. Um, but, you know, as we wrap up and we're opening up for some questions out there, what's a, a piece of advice that you would give to us dualpreneurs, those of us that are working full time or part time, and we are trying to build our businesses, maybe to become full time entrepreneurs or to get that extra income to pay off debt or to add to our savings or to just have fun and live life or just to do something we love. What's something that you can say to us during this time that's very challenging for a lot of people or for those people that are scared to start? You know, what can you tell us as dualpreneurs to help us take that next step and leverage our power to live? You don't have a choice. You have to, you, you have to be able to protect yourself from the woes of society. The only way you can do that is through the skill sets that you develop. So I'm a prime example of a dualpreneur. I got my real estate broker's license in 96, and I was a full-time military person. I couldn't sell real estate to folks that outranked me. And I couldn't sell real estate to the folks that did not outrank me. So I was stuck in the middle. But in the middle, there was still a way. So being a dualpreneur, and I like, and I follow you on this, that means that one aspect of responsibility, I'll let my day, day job take care of that. And that may not be what you want. You may think you're, you're deserving of 80000 even more. But what you create on your spare time, what you give yourself to passionately, that can fund you, that can help you eliminate debt. That can help you set you up for real trips where you're not leveraging and still putting things on credit cards and things of that nature to pay Peter to get out of Paul's way. So being a dual premier, if you can really hone in on what you have to do and what you love to do, there's a bridge between the both of them. Now you're doing that hybrid of doing what's necessary because pain moves us. The pain of not having that's a pretty good motivation. The pain of not being able to go where you want to go when you want to get there, that's a motivation. And the power to live in you is saying that you have enough energy, 212 degrees, to get you through anything you want. So if you're going to sit back and let life pass you up, I would say the first challenge would be to make a decision that you're going to be a dopamine. Don't quit your daytime yet until you perfect the fundamentals of the hustle. Then when the hustle is sustainable, then you can say adios, goodbye, because we don't want to see anybody economically challenged because they jumped the gun 
and not really vetted their own program outright. So programs like the one that you're hosting tonight give folks so many different years of experience in such a short compound way that they can actually make it. They got to tune in and stay involved. That's awesome. And so we did have a, a great question from Lorraine Knox. She said, how can we get your book? That exactly. So if we want to, if we want you as a coach or we want to get your book, how can we get in contact with you? Well, you go to power, the number two, live.net. And the system will queue you up as you coming in. A lot of motivational things. There's some podcasts as well. Not a lot of video podcasts, but a lot of uh, audio podcasts that help you take your time two minutes, three minutes engagement to get you that spark that you need. But if you go to power to live.net, we'll go ahead and get that to you. And I want to do something tonight at your choosing. If you got two folks that you might want to gift this to, I want to go ahead and give two books out tonight as well. Okay. I'll let you handle that any way you want to see it, but I want to get two books out. Oh, y'all always giving. You're so, so giving. That's what I love about my people, boy. I tell y'all, I really appreciate you. Um, before we let everyone go, I did want to be able to open it up to one, anyone who would like to show their face. Yes, you can turn your camera on so we can see your beautiful face. And, or if you have a question for coach before we go, please unmute your mic and ask coach a question. So you can do that now. If you have any question for co coach directly, you can unmute, or if you have something inspirational to share or to say to coach, now is the time to do it. Um, I see Kevin had a question. Kevin, I don't know if you want to ask the question yourself or state that yourself. Doesn't look like he wants to, it's okay. But he says, talking about knowing when you're ready to be in business as opposed to just having a side hustle, stepping out on faith. So he wants you to talk about how would we know if we are ready to actually be in business versus we just have this side hustle that, you know, we really like something to do, but we want to step out on faith. What, what, what is that difference? Well, a lot of times folks are in relationships. And in marriage, there's somehow, you know, there's an additional aspect of responsibility. So there's a different level of fear. And, you know, if you're single, it's like, you know what, it's just me. I can sustain it. I can grind this out. The way you really determine when you're ready is that you should have the household in order. And what I mean by that is right now there's a shift going in on the world. And this shift is going to, you know, yield a lot of people uh, uh, more impoverished and it's going to gain for a lot of folks who are ready. If you take a look at your product and your demand is there, meaning that who needs what you got? Hey, Kevin, how you doing? I see you, man. Who needs what you got? And if, what you're selling, what you're producing, is it in demand? And the key to it is, is that if you're doing everything everybody else is doing, then that traffic is like 285 pre-COVID. Now, if you're going to bring something unique to the table that you know is it really is a game changer, and it's normally just a quick shift, then you know you should be working towards that because you can get stuck in a job longer than you want to be in. And then you can say, you know what, I'm just going to quit. If your job is fueling your hustle and your hustle is strong, and I don't even like calling it a hustle. What I'm referring to, I like the doorpreneur, the entrepreneur aspect of doing them both. You should know when one begins to like take your energy, i.e. that daytime job is stealing you your energy, and your nighttime entrepreneurism is like fueling your energy, and now the revenue is boiling up, you're going to have to let it go. See, in life, we always got to make that one decision. And one decision is the thing that separates you more than anything else. When is the time? There's that power in you that lets you know time is now. Move. But you just can't ignore that actually in the voice. So sustain yourself. Know that you have what you need. And then move when that inner person is talking to you. I just got one follow-up, if you don't mind me asking. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, it's a lot of people online now, especially with all of the um, IG Live and everything else, teaching you how to get that quick dollar. And I think a lot of people are really just thinking they're business people because of that. And they're being inspired by people who are successful to just go out and get that hustle. And that's the reason behind my question, because I think 
it's leading people to the belief that, hey, we can all be business people and we're not being business people effectively. I think that's one of the things that you guys have discussed on here about how to go in it the right way for sustainability, not just the quick a dollar and turnaround. You know, that, that's the impotence of my question. Well, 18 days, it took America 18 days to declare I'm broke. So, you know, yes. I, I've, I observed a lot of gurus in the last 30, 45 days as well. An individual that came out of nowhere with a platform. And when, when me and Tara was talking, she's been doing this for years. And I'm like, you know, you was doing this 10 years ago, what she's doing right now. All she did now was allow you into her world to see how she's done it. So it didn't take her six months to put this together. She's been doing this for years. I think she interviewed me 10 years ago. Yeah. So yeah, you got gurus. And then you got folks who are looking like gurus, but if you're betting the farm on a looking like guru, as opposed to you know what you have, <laughs> these sessions right here is going to poke at your business. So if she had visitors or guests and say, you know what, try this, try that, and you see your vulnerabilities, and you're not paying attention to it, then your business needs work. It needs help. Gotcha. So don't jump out there in the middle of the traffic trying to dodge traffic at 60, 70 miles an hour. But don't be fearful of the product as well. Ask the people around you, what do they think? If the people around you are not supporting you, well, join the Jesus Club. You couldn't do much at all anyway. <laughs> exactly. They did it to Jesus. You know, uh, Coach and Kevin, I, I do want to share this. I want to share with you uh, briefly about my journey so you'll understand the transition, right? So, uh, you know, recently, you know, I, 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 I had a great job. I quit and I jumped off the cliff and tried to build the plane as I went along and was an entrepreneur. My denial was an entrepreneur that's not getting any money is, un is unemployed. I didn't want to do that reality check and I crashed and burned. But then I went back to work and then I realized that, you know, starting a business is not just about your talent and what you can sell. Starting a business is just like a job that you're in. Your job has departments, right? Your job has a human resource department, an accounting department, a marketing department, a sales department, an operations department, a research development department. It has all of these departments and everybody is working their job so that you can focus on your job and be magnanimous with it. And what the mistake a lot of people think is that when they're good at their job, they think they can run a business not realizing there are other people and other aspects of the business that's helping them look good or make it look like it's easy to do the job. And so when you want to become an entrepreneur, being a dualpreneur allows you to sit back, look at the different departments that needs to happen in your business and figure out how you're going to construct that and build a firm foundation. Are you going to be a solopreneur and you're going to do everything? Are you going to automate processes so you'll have an automated bookkeeping process, a sales funnel for your sales? So this is the time that it gives you to, one, think about what you're going to need to be sustainable as an entrepreneur, and then who's going to do it. And as Trevor Ott said, the answer to who doesn't have to be you. Sometimes you might need a business coach to help you. You may need an accountant. You may need an attorney. You may need a marketing coach or a social media person. But this is the time to do it because now your income from your job is your first investor. That is your first capital investor. Your well, job is paying the bills and it's giving you the enough money to invest in your business, invest in your website, invest in the tools that you need, a computer, whatever, so that you can start your business. Now, when I realized that and I leveraged my job, everybody says, you work for the man. I love that man. My, my man gave me benefits, paid my bills. Um, <laughs> you know, let me travel. I went to conferences so that I can start my business. Now, when I was doing my business and my job, what happened was I started making money from my business because I did it right. And so I started making more from my side business than I was making from my actual, my actual job, right? So I kept my job because I just liked what I do. But then that job started taking away the time that was making me the most money. Mm. And so I went from full-time to part-time so that I can focus more on my business. Now it's to the point where my business is making so much money, I don't even need that other job. Do I want to let it go? That's a decision that I have to make. But I'm making more business. So it, it's, a, it's a smooth transition 
as a dualpreneur to help you make that decision. But being a dualpreneur is the most brilliant thing that you can do because it's OJT. It's on the job training. You're learning what to do and what not to do from your employer so you can implement strategies as an entrepreneur. I hope that makes sense. I do good, I do good, coach. You did super good. Hey, listen, I'm sitting up here about to say preach. And I think that uh, one of the other things, don't let the likes on Facebook uh, uh, dictate where you think your business is at. Yeah. The key to it is feedback is important. And it, harsh feedback can be even better. Feedback so, is important. Facebook is not. So <laughs> as, as, I, as I say that, I, I say it because people will, I, people will only share with you what they want you to know. So they will not give you the late nights of crying and, oh, my God, where am I going to get this money to pay my bill? And I, my client didn't pay me and they, oh, they were supposed to pay me 10000 but they ain't paid and they're not going to pay for another 45 days. How am I going to pay? They're not going to show you any of that. So I don't want people to get all this, you know, the glamorization of an entrepreneur. I don't want you to believe in the lie that you have to quit your job and focus on your entrepreneurial venture full time to be successful. That is a lie. That is a lie that I will not allow to live. You can do both. You don't have to do it by yourself, but you can do both. And so that's what dualpreneur is all about is to give you that support system so you don't have to feel that overwhelmed. You have resources in the community. And failing is part of the journey. Uh, folks don't believe that, you know, oh man, this didn't work out, so let me quit. You know, failing and failing fast is important. And the way you fail fast is that you get out there, you shake hands, you do what you need to do, you take your nose like a champ, but at the end of the day, all they're doing is kind of insulating you for success. Failing is the opposite of success. You don't come out the gate successful. You come out the gate making mistakes. You make those mistakes, you just don't repeat them. You make the changes, you make the shift, you make the pivot, and then what you start doing, you start seeing reality kick in because you've been there, done it, and you got the T-shirt. Now it's time to start letting that other thing go because you got some experience, you got some customers, you have a demand, and now all these things begin to present itself properly. But don't be in a rush. Now, if you hate what you do, and it's becoming a health situation, ugh, well, hurt somebody. And I, and I agree with you. If you hate what you do, that is not a reason to quit your job to start a business. That may be a reason to quit your job and find another job. But, you know, a lot of people are like, I hate my job. But that's not a reason to quit your job to be an entrepreneur. That's not a good reason. Um, so, you know, if you hate your job, that may be time to change, shift to another position, another job, or where you're from, so that you can still have that baseline. So you have to think of dualpreneur as a dual engine income. Most passenger planes have at least two engines because of fail safe. If one of them babies conks out, you can still stay in the air with the other engine. And what a lot of people wanna do, they wanna fly in this single engine airplane and get mad when that engine conks out and they crash and burn. And so as a dualpreneur, you have that stabilizing income, which is your job, and then you have that thrust income, which is your entrepreneurial venture. Great. And so not only do you have the thrust income, you also then have the opportunity to add on to your engines. So you don't just have to have two. You maybe have four and then six. So if two of them babies conk out because of a COVID or because of a quarantine, you still have other engines to keep you up in the air. But the point of the matter is we need to at least start with two. Let, let's do that. Let's preach do that. again. Preach, preach, preach. I learned from the coach. You know, there's a, there's a lady that ran for president, uh, Elizabeth Warren, right? I think she was pretty much in the news for the last year. But she wrote a book like 10 years ago called The Dual Income Trap. So a lot of times what folks do now, for example, if you're a married couple and one individual making money and then you're making money and you're taking both of those incomes and you're putting it in your business, you're about to fail. Mm -hmm. Same thing when it comes down to combining income to chase a rabbit, so to speak. So if you know that if you're going to fuel your dream, try to leave your other partner's income alone. So if something goes wrong, you have to let me, you have to bail out of what you don't like doing, that income is still sustaining you. But if the family takes everything they own and they hawk it on that dream, you know what I mean, and it's a harebrained scheme, 
Yeah. <laughs> and that hair brain scheme gets you in trouble. So you got to be a little wisdom with that as well. So I love that you brought that. Sure I love that. that you brought that up because you know I'm thinking as a, a single person because I'm single and never married. You know, shout out to my future husband wherever you may be. But you know the the whole thing that I've I ha I have uh, coached or uh, counseled couples. Uh, done financial counseling for couples. And one of the things that I always try to help them to understand is that they have to learn how to live on one income. Right. They live on one income. And then that extra income helps with fueling the savings. It's just, it's almost like being a dualpreneur, right? right? But that second income is designed to be able to thrust you or add to the savings, the retirement, the, the family outings, the do whatever. In the event that one of them incomes shut down, it doesn't crash and burn the entire household True. within that as well. Now, if you are an aunt, if you are, if you're single like myself, you know, our second income is not another person. It may be our entrepreneurial ventures that's there. Or even if you're married right now, both of your incomes sustain the family. You probably do need another uh, source of income coming in there. So now you have to become a dualpreneur or dualpreneurs together. And so I, I do love what you're saying about that as couples is that learn to live on one source of income, but create multiple streams of income as your thrust. Exactly. Exactly. You're so smart. I'm just trying to be like you and Kevin. Did we answer your questions? <laughs> Yes, you did. Thank you very much. You guys went well beyond what I was expecting. Yeah, we told you and way more than you wanted to know. <laughs> no, no, actually, I come from a family of entrepreneurs, and most of them basically hustled, not because of, and I think they went from full-time jobs to a part-time hustling, and then hustle picked up, and they went back and forth. So no one has ever established this conglomerate of sort as an entrepreneur, but it's always been some type of business operation. So, you know, actually, you can get lulled into believing that. Once you step out of the corporate arena or the business world, you can just be your um, business person, your own entrepreneur, so to speak. And then it's hard to go back. So you're always looking for the next way to kind of sustain that entrepreneurial spirit versus, you know, the dual sourcing. So sometimes that can lead you into a little bit of a financial burden. But I just want to get a sense of what you guys thought about that, because, um, like I said, it's nice to what they call play both sides of the street, but at some point you gotta decide when to cross, you know, if you're gonna cross at all, you know, and it may be okay. Not everybody can do it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, Kevin and Coach, um, and everybody that's watching, there, there's some there's some things I, I've known that, that, are, that are different in terminology, that there are levels. Each ter terminology has a different level, right? So when you're doing a hustle, it's almost like you, you're trying it out. You, you, you're, playing, you're playing it and you're making some money, so you're hustling. And then once you become a hustler and you, you win that with the hustle, you now become an entrepreneur because you're building enterprises, right? But now yes. that you're an enterprises, now you want to be an, uh, now you want to be a business owner, right? And so that business owner is a whole different level, okay? Because an entrepreneur, there's different types, mompreneur, dadpreneur, solopreneur, all those different types of preneurs, right? So you go from huffner, huff, hustler to preneur to business owner. See, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm working towards being a business owner, right? And I don't want to, and I skip self-employed because I don't, you know, entrepreneur, you're almost self-employed, which means you're not working for someone else, but you're working for yourself. And God forbid something happens to you, you're no longer employed, right? Because you're self-employed, solopreneur. And so what I want us dualpreneurs to reach for is to become business owners, because when you are a business owner, whether you work it or not, the business continues with or without you. Right. Now, it needs your leadership. It needs your guidance. You become the CEO. So when I was the CEO of financial institution, whether I was there in the building or not, that, that organization right. can continue to go. It had a board of directors. It had a management staff. It had staff. It had processes, standard operating procedures, had policies. So it was able to continue to go. It just needed me to guide the plane as the CEO and to make the decisions. That's where I, I am striving to be. So when I don't feel good or I just don't feel like working, the work still gets done. Yes. You, you, you know what I mean? And so Absolutely. that's one of the power to live is I don't have problems with people trying to hustle, but I need us to graduate from being hustled to building enterprises and then building businesses so that we can continue to give other people opportunities and jobs, 
help people uh, learn, teach them how to be leaders so that we can go play golf. I love playing golf. I haven't played golf in a long time, but I love playing golf, right? I want to be able to do that and still make money. I want to be able to take my power nap that happens to be a couple hours and still make money and the work still gets done. You know, Absolutely. that's where we want to grow into. And that's where, to me, that power to live is that one step is that we got to think a little bit more and invoke that power so that we can enjoy life. Because even if you're an entrepreneur, you're working more than 40 hours a week. You're probably working 80 hours a week. And so are, do you really have the freedom? You have the freedom to stay home and not go to work, but you're still working from, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning, you know, in, until whenever. So now we want to think about what is freedom to us. I want to be able to make money. I want to be able to get the work done, but I don't want to be the one to have to do it. True. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Use Makes the sense. power. Thank you. Use the power so that you can live. So that's the trade-off. You know, John Maxwell said, I know you get it right, but up. John Maxwell said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you got to build a team. So if you see me here at Oliver, you got to recognize there's a tribe behind me. Somehow, some way, you tell me this is where you got to be, this is what you need to be uh, concerned about, this is where you need to go. So I never operate independently. I didn't do that in the military. And growing up in Philadelphia and wherever you're from, you always had your boys. You always had your girls. You always had your squad. You wasn't going to dance by yourself. You wasn't going out by yourself. As soon as you call yourself a business person, you look around and you buy yourself. By yourself, right. I know folks don't make no money, but they got squads with them that believe in whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. That's every aspiring artist to some degree. So get some people behind you, right? So that they can check you and say, come on, can, I want to be involved. I want to be a part of the team. That's how you know you're graduating out of the business mm -hmm. to now a, a corporation of some sort then you line yourself up properly. So. And I'm glad you said it because for me, I'm a, not only am I an introvert, but I'm a control freak too. What a combination, right? So, I, I, because my whole thing is, why am I going to let somebody else do it, do it wrong, and then I have to go back and do it. I might as well have done it myself, right? But that's not going to take me any farther than where I am right now. So I had to get a team. So my finance department is my accountant right now, and we automate. You know, my legal department is my attorney you know, and we relatively automate with that. My marketing person is, you know, I have a marketing department, which is my marketing per person. And I have an administrative person, which is my virtual assistant. And so they keep reminding me to delegate. And you need people on your team to remind you, hey, I can do this for you. Let me do this so that you can focus on your revenue generating activities, your RGA. Uh, your R yeah, RGA, because if you're focusing on everything else that's not making you money, it's taken away from you making money. So what, what tribe can you build? What, what squad can you build? Or, you know, what your girls, your boys, whatever, can you build that can focus on other aspects to help you focus on your RGA so you can make money and feed everybody? Most entrepreneurs, they're just concerned about feeding themselves. I want to be able to feed everybody because if everybody's fed, I'm going to be, that means I'm fed the more. Awesome. Well put. That's cool. Well, y'all got me on a little tangent here. Yeah, it's in you. You got to let it out. You know, the key to it is it's a great conversation. It's been flowing. But uh, Kevin, you're a dad, right? So I'll leave you with this acronym. And it goes back. We already honored the mothers yesterday, and we talked a little bit about the date. But think about the word dad. You need to think about this two times. You ready? Dad actually means delegate and disappear. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Learn to delegate and get out of there. So that's how you grow it, right? <laughs> what does mom stand for, dad? We don't, play, we don't play with the term mom. That's special. So we, you can play with dad all day long because they number 23 out of the 25 holidays. This is the top three. So you can't play around with mom. You're going to have some pushback. But dad, delegate, and disappear. Mom? Wow. <laughs> no, I need, look, I need to become a dad then, dad. Okay. <laughs> I ain't never heard that before. That kind of made me laugh. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Um, uh, is there anyone else before we go that has any comments, questions, concerns, praises, accolades before we go? Sierra, I see you online. Thank you for joining us, sis. 
Um, Misha, I see you. Erica, I see you. Lorraine, I see you all. You all have been ha having some great conversations in the dialogue in the chat. If you're watching us live or you're watching replay, hashtag replay, make sure you put your comments or your questions below. Coach is a part of the community, so he will answer those questions or I will answer those questions. Uh, Coach, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and um, Kevin, since you are showing your lovely face, your beautiful face, and as a dad, share with us your business that you that you uh, currently do, or what is your superpower? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've tried to have my banner in the back, but I came on so late with the camera. So um, I have a business, um, dessert catering company called Catered Cakes here in Atlanta. And we basically specialize in the ultimate dessert experience by providing unique treats <laughs> that folks can enjoy for all occasions from weddings to casual events. And we've been on social media trying to just post some things and I'm working on training, not only for the standpoint of just fancy desserts, but just where people can do vegan and alternative eating options with the still enjoying the same sweet treats, things like that. So I'm delving into those things, writing the book, um, putting recipes out and, doing teach some classes once everything opens back up. So I'm hoping that'll kind of kickstart my interest in doing that as well. I also work for UPS full time. So that's been my 26 year gig. Oh, I'm trying to um, I break away with the, with the UPS. Um, I don't want you to wait until all this is over to do what you want to do. There is a lot of virtual options that you can do that. And we can definitely offline have a conversation about that because you can start making some money now while oh, yeah. everyone is still quarantined. So I hope you are definitely leveraging that. I'm not into the vegan thing yet. So I kind of <laughs> still like the sweet treats the way they are. So yes, I got thank that. you for making my sweet treats. I'm a chocolate lover, hint, hint. So. <laughs> <laughs> got you. We can, make sure you. we can make sure you're happy with it. He's the candy man, boy, the cupcake man. I love, boy, absolutely. And my name is Tara Jackson, a.k.a. Madam Money. You may know me as the uh, personal finance expert and contributor for Black Enterprise, Al Jazeera, uh, CNN, as well as a few others, Fox and all of that. But what you didn't know or what you may know is I own a company called SRJ business solutions and we focus on building and designing websites for small businesses we believe that small businesses regardless of size should look like a fortune 500 company online and we look forward to building your virtual storefront so that you can have responsive professional clean and easy for people to buy from website if you'd like to have a conversation about building your website just go to srjwebsites.com that's s rjwebsites.com and schedule a consultation. Look forward to having a chat with you to see how we can uh, satisfy your website needs. Again, coach, you the bomb.com. You just are. And and everybody who's joined us, thank you so much for joining us. This is the last live for the season, but we will be back. So stay tuned for that. Just remember, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And don't forget, wash them hands, y'all. Come on. Have a good evening.